Can we give God a hand clap of praise? He is worthy. A risen Savior. How awesome it is to have a, to know Jesus and have the freedom in our nation to worship Jesus today. Amen. Uh, before we get started, I want to pray. Guys, uh, it's one thing we can't do enough of, but we need, we need a move of God in our nation. We need a resurrection in our nation. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And today, I ask God as we open your word that you would speak to every heart in this room. And I pray, God, that we're challenged by your word to not return to what we used to be. But really, Father God, I just pray for true heart worship from every person in this place. Because when we really begin to worship you in our communities, in our homes, and in our nation, your word says if you would be lifted up before men, you would draw all men unto you. God, we can't lift you higher than you already are, but we can lift you up in our heart. And I pray that today, that we lift you up because you are our risen Savior. Strengthen us by your word that our lives may be true and minister to the broken in this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Wayne, I liked that last song, man. It looked like all hope was gone. Kind of looks that way from time to time, don't it? Look at our culture. Look at our nation. Look at what's going on. Who would have ever dreamed five years ago we'd look like we do today as a nation? And I'm going to challenge you with this. The further a nation turns from God, the more evil it becomes and the more evil it looks. Sodom and Gomorrah. We may have to wake them up and apologize. Hello? May have to wake them up and apologize. So why the dying culture? Why the dying culture? Is the title of my message today. And what happens, we have encounters with Jesus... And then we we'll go back. And we're going to read that through the scripture. When, when Jesus had hung on the cross, the disciples, they went back. They, they left. They scattered before he was ever hung on the cross. Jesus told them, You're going, Peter, you'll deny me. Before the rooster crows, you'll have denied me three times. He said, Not me. Not, not me. I'll die with you. But boy, ain't it funny how when the when it got hot in the kitchen, he turned and run. He turned and run. And I think, I don't think, we need to quit turning and running. And we need to believe, be the believers that Jesus, and the only way that's going to happen is that he creates the right heart inside of each and every one of us. We live in a world where lifestyles that should make a sailor blush with shame are somehow being shoved in our children's face, being shoved in culture's face, being shoved in the church's face, as these are new ways of living. It's new life. I got a news flash for the world. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other life outside of Jesus. Everything else that we lean to, if you were here at the morning service this morning and the, or the sunrise service I talked about, in, in Romans, the sixth chapter, Paul wrote, whatever you serve, that's what slave you are. Whether sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. We're giving ourselves to one or the other. There is no, there, the only freedom we can have is in Jesus. It don't come from a government. 
I'm going to say that again. It don't come from the government. It don't come from any government. Freedom comes from a heart being set free from bondage. And not the only thing that can do that is the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing it can. That's why America used to be so free. That's why our founding fathers, uh, they would plumb wig out today. That we were our one nation under God. One nation. But now we're not one nation under God. We're one nation under every God. That's just, oh, we can worship any God you want to. It's freedom. You worship any God you want to. Okay, Cletus, I got another news flash for you. Whatever God you serve and whatever God you worship, and if it ain't Jesus, I got one question that I want one of these to answer for me. What's your God done for you lately? Can he heal your sickness? Can he fix your brokenness? Can he repair your broken heart? Can he restore you from addiction? Not at all. But the only life that comes, that we can have and experience, comes from Jesus. And it's not, it is much, much more than just having this thought of Jesus in our head and knowing the name of Jesus and mentioning the name of Jesus. It's a relationship. It, it, that's what changes the person. But yet we got all these lifestyles flying out of the closets. It says, this is new ways of living. Yet it's creating a society of mental illness, hopelessness, lawlessness. Who would have ever thought five years ago we wouldn't have a, that police officers and first responders would be shoved to the back to the point that they want to quit. And we got to retrain them. We got to retrain them not to execute justice. Who would have ever thought we'd be looking at a time like this in our culture? Five years ago, we'd have never dreamed it. But yet all of this stuff is creating lawlessness and leaving many on the fringe wondering, what do I do? What do I do? Even got the church wondering, what do we do? I got another news flash. He's alive. Stop acting like that. there's a song that says we used to sing years ago, God's not dead. He's still alive. I said God's not dead. He's still alive. Y'all want me to keep going? Nobody left yet. I got news for you again. God ain't dead. He ain't even been sick. He ain't even been sick. But it's time for the sickness of a rotten culture to wake up and serve the creator. There's only one creator. There's only one God that created heaven and earth. There's only one God that gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's only one God that paid the price for our sins and redeemed us. He gave us his best and now we can walk in his best because we surrender to him. Whatever you make yourself a slave to, that's what a slave you are, whether of sin leading to death or obedience that leads us to righteousness. I want to be the slave of Jesus. I want to lift his name higher. I want to give him the praise that he deserves because people that I cross their path with needs to be set free too. Amen. Amen. A lot of people broken and now they'll, they'll go to church today and hear a message about the history of Jesus and how he rose on the third day. There's much more to Easter Sunday than this. And the thing for me is he's still he's alive right now. And he's wanting to give somebody in this room, somebody in this world, somebody watching us on our on our live feed, somebody wa that'll watch us on our YouTube channel, there that Jesus is wanting to change your life. Call on him. But then there'll be many that'll hear this message about the, the history of Jesus and then go home with no hope, with no hope at all. And my challenge to you today is to open your heart to Jesus and allow him to change your life because you choose to surrender to him.
Luke chapter 24, I want to read you this story. We're going to start in verse 1. I'm going to read through verse 12. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb to bring spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And then they went and did not find, they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why is people in this culture today seeking new life? Living, it's, it's a, this is new life. We get to do this. We get to do that. And they're seeking life. But why? But it's dead. It don't create nothing in them. It only leaves them empty. But why seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And then verse 8 says, And then they remembered his words. And then they returned from the tomb and told these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed like idle tales. That's what's wrong with our culture today. The church has proclaimed the name of Jesus, but there's been no power to it, and it seems like an idle tale. And they did not believe them. But verse 12 says, But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Why was Peter so surprised for over three years Jesus had explained to him this is what was going to happen? How did they all forget that? You know what we, we, people says, man, I ain't got a good memory. No, we've got a great forgettery. We do. We have a great forgettery in our culture because we have forgotten the promises of God. And the only way to have the promises of God in any life is because of our obedience to Him. I'm going to share this with you. Uh, and I share this without any apologies. I'm very bold that our, our nation, our nation's leaders, it is sickening to me that a government would want to promote mental illness. But Joe Biden, just Friday, and I finished writing this message on Thursday, and Friday I hear this thing. Now therefore I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me, by the Constitution and laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024, as Transgender Day of Visibility. I call upon all Americans to join us in lifting up the lives and voices of transgender people throughout our nation and to work toward eliminating violence and discrimination based on gender identity. You can read this at whitehouse.gov. I challenge you to go read the whole story. And then I got a message that I hope somehow that through, that Joe Biden will hear this thing. And if you come and take me to jail for it, come on, I'll wait on you. You are destroying people who are confused about their identity. You can't know who you are until you know whose you are. And for all the people that are hung in a transgender lifestyle, not knowing if you're a male and a female, you need to go back and read the book. And in Genesis, God created male and female. He didn't create confusion. 
In fact, the Bible tells us that the author of confusion is Satan. And if you are that person that is hung in that place and don't know who you are, I make myself available to you. And you can reach out to this church at Living, to the, Living for the Brand. You can go to our Facebook page. And I will drive to where you are to see you set free. We are not against you. We do not hate you. But I cannot promote the lifestyle of confusion that you're walking in. And Joe Biden, you need to quit governing sexual immorality and learn to govern a nation. <clears throat> You've never had to govern heterosexual people. So I got to call you a fool, Joe Biden. Because you don't need to help these people go down a further road of destruction. Stand in cities, burn cities, because they need to vent a little. They need a Savior. They need a Savior. And they need to know He is risen. And you have trashed, you have trashed, sir, very disrespectfully, the God that created you. You want to even push abortion in our face. Why didn't your mother abort you? What did she have? I mean, come on, folks. It's okay for abortion. No, it is not. You're killing a life. And you're killing lives today because you push an agenda that God never intended to be pushed. And the Word of God even says it's an abomination unto Him. Again, I tell you, my friend, He is alive. He is risen. Stop seeking the living among the dead. And turn to Jesus and allow Him to straighten your life out and re reestablish who you are in Him. It broke my heart to see Jesus belittled. We've got men returning from battlefields that get no recognition and transgender people hailed as heroes. My friend, you're not a hero, you're a zero. And the reason you're a zero and you'll continue in a zero lifestyle is because you choose not to turn around. There was a time that I had to turn around. I thought drinking and partying and being the hoorah and causing mischief. And, but that's not who I am anymore. And it wasn't something that I quit doing. It's what Jesus done for me. You're looking at an old boy here that couldn't even read. And never did I set out to be a preacher. And when I, when I decided that, that felt that call on my life, my family said, yeah, I'm going to go hear you preach. Because all them F's you got on that report card And then my family come to me after it was over and said, I got one question for you. Who taught you how to read? And everything was such a message to me. Hear me, transgender people. Hear me, people that's hung up in addiction of whatever kind you're hung up into. Everything was such a message to me that I didn't even know I was reading. And I had to stop and I had to look at my folks and I'm going... I guess the Lord did. I was 27 years old before I made that change. I didn't do it. I, didn't, I wasn't raised in a church house. I wasn't raised on a church pew. But I met a Jesus that I began to understand. And when I opened his word, the, the pages that, that's, the, the words that's in this book begin to jump off this page and eat me alive and, 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 and burn within me because I wanted, I wanted this. I, want, I wanted new life in Christ Jesus. I wanted everything Jesus had for me. And I began to read more of it and more of it and more of it. And there's too many Christian, Christians have went home and shut the book and read no more of it. 
And we can't understand who Jesus is, church, until we open this thing back up and start putting it in our heart and allow it to burn within you. I can't light that fire in you. If I could light the fire in you, I'd do it. But I can't light the fire in you. But i tell you where the igniter is. It's the Word of God. And Joe Biden, you need to repent. You need to fall on your knees. And you need to quit governing sexual immorality and get to govern this nation. You have forgotten we the people. You work for me, sir. You work for me. And I am not ashamed to call you out on your lies and the hypocrisy that you're doing in this nation today. And I do hope this message reaches your doorstep and hits your ears. And I pray that in the process that Jesus that gave his life for you, sir, could be welcomed in your heart because you don't know him. You don't know him. If you did, you wouldn't push people to limits of destruction in their life. And I say that because I care about you. A lot of people in America have some kind of encounter with Jesus, know the name of Jesus, hear the name of Jesus, say the name of Jesus, but that, that, all of that still produces no change. It happened to a group of people in John chapter 6. And if some of you political leaders are listening to this and you're getting mad at this old boy, I want you to hear this part that comes out of the Word of God because this is what changes people. Not Frankie. I'm not trying to be nobody's conviction today. If it's bothering you and you're angry and you're hurting and you're mad, you shouldn't even say that. Get over yourself. You can get glad in the same britches you're getting mad in. Here was a whole group of people in John chapter 6 that was looking for the wrong things. They wanted everything Jesus had, and that's what our culture's created. We want everything Jesus has got, but don't require nothing of me. <laughs> you want me to do what? You want me to quit my sexual immorality? You must be out of your mind. Do you know how much fun I have with my sexual immorality? Let me tell you this. This is what has drifted away from the church. If you don't turn from your sexual immorality, there's a hot place called hell that you're going to spend your eternity in. And your drugs and your alcohol and your, your whatever you're addicted to, whatever you're trying to hide in your lifestyle. Whatever, but anymore, they're saying, don't hide it, just come out. And Christians, you go hide. And the Christians have done it, but I'm not going to hide. It's time that the church wake up. It's time that the church be God's people. But he said in John 6 verse 53, I'm going to read you this part and then I'm going to give you a little bit of the backstory. Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. You see, what Jesus was promoting was an abiding lifestyle with him. An abiding lifestyle. Not an encounter, a place I come and hear about him on Sunday and leave and keep continuing in a wayward lifestyle on Monday. I can't do that and know Jesus. I can't do that and be set free by Jesus. If I'm in a wayward lifestyle on Sunday and I'm setting this on, on Monday and I'm setting in the church on Sunday, you can't fix you that way. If you saw Turbo this morning, I didn't fix him doing all that one day a week and he didn't fix me. You know what? We both kind of fixed each other. Because Turbo showed me what he would do and what he wouldn't do and he had to learn what I would do and what I wasn't going to put up with. But then he says in verse 57, as the living Father has sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate manna and are dead. 
He who eats this bread will live forever. And these things he said in the synagogues as he taught in Capernaum. And watch in verse 60. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? And if you're in a wayward lifestyle and you're hung up in transgender identity and homosexuality and even heterosexual sin, let's just get real with it. Sexual immorality is sexual immorality. I don't care where you are and until you allow God to fix you, until you allow God to fix you, until you allow God to fix you, you're going to continue to live a wayward lifestyle. So stop saying his name if you're living wayward. Stop saying you're living for Jesus if you're living in a wayward lifestyle and displeasing him. God wants a man and a woman in a covenant relationship with him before they engage in a sexual act. Is that okay that I get that graphic? Because the world sure is. If you're engaging in sexual immorality outside of a covenant relationship with Jesus, you're walking in sin. Sorry. No, I'm not. It's the truth. Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we're glad all these other lifestyles are coming out of the closet because it helps heterosexual people hide their deal. Oh, feel justified. Oh, I ain't doing what they're doing. Let me tell you something. If you don't know Jesus, there ain't no way to enjoy the life you're living if you don't know him. It says, therefore, many of his disciples, verse 60, when they heard this, said this is a hard saying, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus was, he was not promoting cannibalism when he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. He wasn't promoting cannibalism at all. What is cannibalism? That means where you just go to eating people. He simply was using a metaphor to teach them that their believing in him, trusting in him, seeking him was vital to their life. Without food, a body will die. Without Jesus, our spirit man will die. We will die. John 4, 24, Jesus told the woman, and the Samaritan woman at the well, he said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, it's an internal change that happens to a man. It's an internal change that happens to a woman. It's an internal change because the spirit of Almighty God moves in, and he starts putting to death and bringing to your mind and to your memory, you don't need to do that anymore. You don't need to act like that anymore. You don't need to rebel like that anymore. You need to live surrendered. You know what this means? We used to. They don't even want you to remember this in our culture anymore. This means surrender. When the policeman, all this police brutality, the police is being mean to me. When the police walks in and he yells, put your hands up, I don't care if I didn't do nothing, but if I hear that right there, I'm going to put my hands up. If you had a mama like I had, you put your hands up too. I'm going to tell you what I wish we had in our country. We've got all these drive-by killings, drive-by shootings, drive-by this, drive-by that, and don't and disrespect authority anymore. Mamas, if you got little kids about here and they disrespect you, the Word of God says, wire them out. My mama read that in that book. I don't know if she read it because my mama was part Indian, part bulldog. When she wasn't on the war path, she was on the couch growling. I don't know if she read it, but she'd sure heard it. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Oh, she wasn't sparing no rod. My mama used both ends of it. And I'm going to tell you what I'd like to have today. I think it'd straighten out a lot of our younger people in this identity crisis. 
Young people, you've not been parented. Parents, shame on you for not teaching your children. As the Word of God says, train them up in the way they should go, and when they're old, they'll not depart from it. You didn't teach them about life. You didn't teach them about Jesus, probably because your generation didn't teach you either. So we've got a communication breakdown through the years about who Jesus is and who he wants to be to you and who he wants to be in you. So what I'd like to have is a bunch of mamas like mine that believe like mine did. Take them up out of Dallas, take them down to Houston, turn them out and just load buses of them. They want Antifa to burn the towns, burn the cities, just bust the windows out, set the police cars on fire, just get out of their way, let them have a temper tantrum. (laughs) Try that with my mama. I'd like to have a bunch of mamas like mine take them to these big cities, turn them out, and let them do some drive-by whippings. That might straighten a bunch of them out. Might straighten a bunch of them out. So any person wrestling with your identity, hung in transgender, hung in homosexuality, Not knowing if you're this and not knowing it. Let let me tell you this. If you had known the word of God and and for this, I'm going to apologize for your generation. They failed you. But I'm not going to fail you today. I want you to know the tomb is empty. He rose again on the third day. And he wants to rise in your life. All you have to do is be willing to surrender to him. Are you willing to change your direction? But Jesus wasn't promoting cannibalism. And when he said, flesh don't give life. Only the Holy Spirit gives life. Salvation is not attained by human desires and human knowledge and human flesh or human efforts. Jesus asked, does this offend you? He asked them that. And what he's really asking them, is this teaching tripping you up? Because he said to them, many of them went back and walked no more with them. And if you'll look on with me right here, he said in verse 63, it is the flesh who gives life. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words which I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. So God has to give us the revelation of who Jesus is. From that time, many of his disciples went back, in verse 66, went back and walked no more with him. And then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? I want you to know this. Jesus ain't in your good buddy business. If you're not going to turn from your sin... Jesus ain't going to turn to your lifestyle. Will you go away? You got a decision to make. Joe Biden, you have a decision to make. You have a decision to make. God gave every one of us, if you read this book, you will understand. He gave you, he gave me the right to choose what I'm going to do. I forget who it was in the Old Testament. He said, choose this day who you're going to serve. As for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I will not put my Jesus down. I don't care where you put me, what you do to me, where you want to haul me off to. I'm tired of the threats being made to the church. It is time that the church come alive in the spirit that he called us to. And walk no more with them and walk with the Savior of this world. There's only one way to have a resurrected life, and that is through Jesus. But this is what I love about as this story goes on. In verse 68, but but Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words to eternal life. Also, we have come to to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The son of the living God. There's only one living God. He's the one that created this universe. He's the one that, that appeared to, to Moses on the mountain. Gave him the Ten Commandments. 
And Jesus answered to them in verse 70. No, that, that was it. That's where I was stopping at right there. Jesus said this to them, No one can come to me unless it's granted to them by the Father. In other words, God, in other words, God only to Jesus, he can only let those that know Jesus who are willing to respond to him not have an encounter with him. He don't want you having an encounter. He wants you to have a relationship with him. The multitude went back and walked no more with him. Too many so-called Christians go back and walk no more and have no walk with him at all. Sickened by the pleasures of this life, they return to sin. I'm going to read this to you in Proverbs 26 and 11. As a dog returns to his own vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. I'm gonna get I'm gonna make some of y'all mad at me now. You ever seen a dog throw up and then go back and eat it? You know how much money I could save if I could just find me some dogs that'd puke for my dog? I wouldn't have to buy no more dog food. Not none. I, 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 maybe I need, I've trained Turbo to do all that stuff. Maybe I need to find me a dog, just teach him how to throw up. Man, I won't never have to buy dog food no more. Get him to throw up twice a day and he can just eat his stuff. What would be enjoyable about that? When, when we think about that in my, our mind, it's like, Pastor, would you shut up? No. Because if we continue back to our sin and we go back to all the garbage, you're just like a dog returning to his vomit. If you want to walk in your sexual immorality, you're just like a dog returning to his vomit. If you're hung in your addiction and you refuse to release that to Jesus, you're hung in your, like a dog returning to his vomit. And it is time that the people of God stop saying that they know this Jesus when you've never been set free by him. When you refuse to be set free by him, stop claiming his name. Surrender yourself. Choose this day who you will serve. Repent and go back to your vomit no more. But there's good news. Come on, Wayne. There's good news today. If you've been going back, stop. Stop going back. Fix your eyes on Jesus. He is alive. Can we give him a hand clap of praise for that today? <laughs> Hallelujah. As Wayne and them begin to play, Stop living confused by culture that screams new life, new life when there's no life in what they're doing at all. Turn to the giver of life. Surrender to him. And allow him to create a new heart in you. Y'all stand with me. God, do a work in this place today. We leave here. I pray that your word would burn in our hearts, God. That we learn to know you, learn to trust you, and learn to surrender to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need to pray this morning, come on.